in an article published in the Journal of Affective Disorders entitled, Is Social Network Site Usage Related to Depression? A Meta-Analysis of Facebook Depression Relations. Authors Sun Kyung Yoon, Mary Kleinman, Jessica Mertz, and Michael Brannick of the Department of Psychology, University of South Florida, tell us the following. Facebook depression is defined as feeling depressed upon too much exposure to social networking sites. Researchers have argued that upward social comparisons made on social networking sites are the key to the Facebook depression phenomenon. To examine the relations between social networking sites' usage and depression, they conducted four separate meta-analyses relating depression to 1. Time spent on social networking sites 2. Social networking site checking frequency 3. General and 4. Upward social comparisons on social networking sites A meta-analysis is not an analysis done by Facebook's parent firm Meta, but rather is a survey of the results of all available scholarly research on a topic. Their literature search yielded 33 articles with a sample of 15,881 for time spent on social networking sites, 12 articles with a sample of 8,041 for social networking site checking frequency, and 5 articles with a sample of 1,715 and 2,298 for the general and upward social comparison analyses, respectively. They summarized the results of their meta-analysis as follows. Significant correlations between social network site usage variables, i.e. time spent on social networking sites and social networking site checking frequency, and depression were found. Respecting the distinction between correlation and causation, it is reasonable in this case to conclude that Facebook usage causes depression. Significant correlations between social comparisons made on social networking sites, i.e. general and upward comparisons, and depression were found. In other words, if someone sees his or her Facebook friends being more attractive, having more fun, going to interesting places, and in general leading happier and more fulfilling lives, that person is likely to become depressed. Social comparisons on social networking sites were more strongly related to depression than was time spent on social networking sites. This means that social comparisons were the most important factor, independent variable, in causing depression. In an article published in the Elsevier journal Science Direct entitled The Interplay Between Facebook Use Social Comparison, Envy, and Depression, Helmut Appel, Alexander L. Gerlach, and Jan Krusius of the Department of Applied Social Psychology, University of Cologne, Germany, tell us that depression does not predict Facebook use. The finding that passive Facebook use predicted changes in well-being over time, while the opposite pathway was not significant, supports a causal chain from passive Facebook use through envy, to depression. In an article published in the Review of General Psychology entitled, Too Many Friends, Too Few Likes, Evolutionary Psychology and Facebook Depression, C.R. Blees of University College, Dublin, argues that the mismatch between current social milieu and the environment of evolutionary adaptation affords some predictions about the use of social media as a trigger for depression, depression being defined as an adaptive functional response to perceptions of relatively low social value and or dysphoria, meaning a profound state of unease or dissatisfaction, the opposite of euphoria. Professor Blees hypothesized that users of Facebook may be more susceptible to causal triggers for depression under the following specific circumstances. A. The greater number of friends that user has online. B. The greater time that the user spends reading updates from this wide pool of friends. C. The user does so regularly. And D. The content of the updates tends to be of a bragging nature. Look what a good time I am having. Look how beautiful I am. 
See what a beautiful place I am in? Professor Blees further hypothesized that the frequency and number of displays of higher status cues observed by the user may incur the perception of low relative social value among users automatically triggering this response. That is to say, depression. I heard of a fellow to whom some of the above more than likely applies. Here are a few things I have heard about him. He was in a business where he experienced a certain amount of success but never really fit in. This was for a number of reasons. One was that he is what you might call an artsy intellectual, and for that reason he had very little in common with the people he had to deal with each day. He would go out to business meals and had a difficult time keeping up a conversation when the topic drifted away from the specific business matters at hand. Another reason he didn't fit in was that he made far less money than individuals in comparable positions in his industry. He could never afford the sort of clothes they wore, cars they owned, or vacations they took. Male executives in his business, for the most part, had beautiful wives or girlfriends, attracted by the money, glamour, and prestige. But throughout his time in that line of work, he never had a girlfriend at all, except for brief situations where a woman thought that he could assist them with their careers or wanted money. I am told that 10 years ago he had a relationship with a woman who promised him everything he had ever wanted in life. Children, a family, love, loving sex, interesting friends, support of the companionship. But then, all of a sudden, the woman pulled the plug on the entire thing. Since that time, he has puttered away at things that interested him, but that's about all. He hasn't had physical intimacy of any kind with a woman since that time, that is to say, for 10 years. He has had dinners and lunches with women in restaurants, but those women were either married, in relationships, and or explicitly uninterested in any type of relationship with him. That's what I've picked up from conversations I have heard where his name has come up. I cannot vouch for the accuracy of any of this, but in a certain way it doesn't matter since I'm referring to an anonymous person. It is my belief that he had been on social media since the mid-2000s. As for Facebook, he found himself becoming friends, first with people who share his intellectual and cultural interests, then with people he had known personally in his business, and later with other people in that business. He had a vague idea that if he kept up with people in his business, someone might notice him, that he might get back into the swing of that business, and that someone might even take an interest in projects he was working on. But none of that happened. The woman who had promised him the world had friended him on Facebook. That was how the whole thing started. For a year or so, they were a dream romantic social media couple. When they became engaged, everyone was ooing and eyeing for a few days. That's basically all I know about that. There's a rumor that when she broke up with him, she told him things that seriously damaged his self-esteem. Whatever those things were, they were devastating to him. Or it could be that the gossip I have heard, as gossipers want to do, exaggerated matters. Whether or not any of this is true, as I understand it, he was very low after the breakup. But once again, that's just gossip. Someone told me that he developed fantasies about a couple of women who were way out of his league. Did I mention that this guy's not particularly sexy or attractive? And ultimately, those fantasies, like most fantasies, did nothing to make him any happier. That's the nature of fantasies. Fantasies of wealth or power, for example. Unless a person is able to act on such fantasies in a constructive way, unless those fantasies come with a dollop of hope that is not, in itself, just another fantasy. But back to Facebook. Facebook fueled those fantasies while at the same time making him feel more and more negative about his grungy life. There were all of those friends, having fun, doing fun things in fun places. And there was he, frittering away his time at things that went nowhere. Anyway, that is all I know about this guy. He is not even an acquaintance. I have been told that I have met him a couple of times, but I honestly cannot remember. Can't remember his face, his voice, or anything about him. So all of what I have said about him is hearsay, rumor, or gossip. It's maybe better to think of him as a made-up, 
composite character, someone we have constructed for purposes of illustrating our thesis about Facebook depression. And that's all there is to say for the moment. We may pass on future research on this and related topics as it comes to our attention. <laughs>